We're here talking with Hugo about Assassin's Creed Black Flag DLC, and it's Adewale is the character? Yeah, uh, the Black Flag is called Freedom Cry, and our main character is Adewale, Edward's first mate. Edward's first mate. Now, he's in the main game, but this is an extended version of his story, correct? That's right. He's a big part of the main game, but our story in the DLC takes off uh, 15 years after the end of the main game. Now, there's some pretty heavy themes. It's, it's slavery, it's the idea of a homeland, it's where you belong, it's race as well. How did you tackle those challenges from a thematic perspective, but a gameplay thing as well? Because you've got to make the theme match the play. So I would have to say very delicately, uh, but actually what happened was we were really interested in the character of Adewale and uh, his backstory uh, being a, f a freed slave uh, just made it uh, really easy for, it, for us to uh, move in that direction. We wanted him to be confronted with his past. He's definitely a different assassin. I mean, they're all different. Uh, him. He's uh, much more imposing, uh, a little bit more brutal. Uh, more brutal in Assassin's Creed games. Yes, he uh, now has a machete, which is pretty brutal, along with a blunderbuss, which is a fancy way of saying a shotgun. So he makes um, steak tartare and then turns it into hamburger? That's one way of looking <laughs> at it. <laughs> okay, now that's going to change the whole attack style because it's a lot of slashing. And then how do you get around the ESRB with a blunderbuss? Uh, well, you know, the game is uh, checked by the SRB and it, it, and it passes. Uh, it's not, uh, there's, no, there's no dismemberment, there's no, okay. nothing of that type, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's just the way he, condu he, he conducts himself uh, that's a little bit more intimidating. Uh, but you'll notice uh, in his um, relationships with the other characters in the DLC, uh, that's far from the only thing that there is to him. Now, is there a lot of stealth still? Because he's a big guy. Absolutely. Uh, the same stealth mechanics from uh, Black Flag are present in the DLC, and they work uh, the same. Now, how much uh, playtime is there? Because Assassin's Creed DLC is usually quite significant. Uh, we have a significant amount of content in this one, uh, anywhere between three and six hours of gameplay. This time, we've went really all out on what we call the systemic missions. Everything, uh, these uh, events that are happening inside of Port-au-Prince, uh, you can choose to get involved with, or you can uh, take off on your boat and then uh, get involved in uh, different activities in the Caribbean Sea that are uh, unique to the DLC. So that strong role-playing play element from Assassin's Creed 3 is back. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the open world is, uh, is uh, the charm of, this, uh, of the game. Now, this is, this is a unique challenge to me because you've got Assassins tend to be embodiments of their world, all the way back to Althea. Um How does um, Adewale embody the world for the DLC? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think uh, he's definitely uh, a part of it in the sense that uh, by being confronted with his past, uh, he's forced uh, to ask himself questions about uh, his, his previous actions. Now, when you do a character who is uh, a freed slave, or a pirate slave, um, you get into a challenge, I think, of making him interesting. He still has to be his own person, not just slave guy. So how'd you approach that? Uh, I think it has to do with his interactions uh, inside the city. Uh, he'll meet uh, different people, and uh, there you'll also discover uh, there's uh, more sides to him than just uh, uh, this guy who's confronting slavery. Well, we tried to uh, stay true to history. Aside from uh, certain obvious fictions, uh, we stayed extremely true to uh, everything we researched. As an assassin, the motto is uh, anything is permitted, and he'll be confronted with uh, a Templar. Uh, I don't want to give anything away, but... Uh, something away. No, I can't. But uh, he'll, he'll have to uh, deal with... Uh, those, uh, those opposing forces that the Templar brings forth. How much is it is moral choice, like pure moral choice, and how much of it is the gameplay will be affected by your choices? Uh, I think the gameplay is, uh, it depends on what level you look at it. The, your, the choices you make will allow you to uh, build a community uh, inside, uh, inside our world. So you can choose to participate and help build this community or, or, or maybe choose to uh, 
head more towards uh, other uh, means of uh, fun. Is any of the overarching first civilization, Apples of Eden, anything like that, do we see any of that expanded in the DLC? I, uh, I, I can't go into that. Just yes or no? I, I'm going to have to uh, not confirm nor deny uh, right. your statement. Okay, I don't know what to ask because I'm still thinking about that blunderbuss just shredding a guy's face. There's absolutely no, no, no shredding of faces. There's no, there's no face shredding. No. no. How did you decide what realistic violence is too much? Uh, well, we try to uh, stay consistent with the main game. Uh, so it's more about posture and uh, movement than it is about uh, blood and guns. So you won't tell me about the first Civ stuff? No. Please? Not at all? <laughs> no. Damn. <laughs>